Okay, before I really get started on this integral, I'm going to re-express it as a power of 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to take an informal approach to it. And that means I'm looking for the chain rule backwards. And that's really what u substitution is all about. So I have some function raised to a power. If I have the derivative of that function sitting right next to it, this little two right here is a consequence of using the chain rule on the function this came from. It's, that's the derivative of the interior part. Now I have to compensate by putting a one half out in front. Then I can just guess the antiderivative. It's this thing to the positive one half divided by positive one half. So dividing by positive one half is the same as multiplying by two over one. All right, so that might seem a little odd if you're not used to doing it that way, but as long as you're checking your answer and getting the integrand that you started with when you differentiate this answer, then it's legitimate. And that sort of guess and check process actually gets you uh, feeling more intuitive about how the chain rule works forward and backward. So if I differentiate this, bring down the one half, it kills that too. Subtract one from the exponent, I get an exponent of negative one half. Then the chain rule says you better tack on the derivative of the interior, which is that exact two that we set up at the beginning. So I end up with two X minus one that's square rooted. Instead of a one half power, I'd prefer to look at it that way. Plug in the three for the upper limit and I get a square root five. Plug in a one for the lower limit and I get a square root of one, which is just one. Um, I'm not saying that u substitutions are always useless because there are some integrals where they absolutely require you to do a u substitution. It's just usually if you see a derivative right next to a, like the derivative of the interior right next to the, a function of the interior, then you see the chain roll backwards and you just guess. All right, so let's do it the formal way. I would try to clean up the square root down here by saying let u equal 2x minus 1. du equals 2x, 2 2 dx. And then normally what I do is go ahead and make the, the 2 dx happen by sticking a 2 in the integrand. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm multiplying by 2 on the interior, 1 half on the exterior. And I'm going to take the opportunity here to transform my limits. So when I write this as a, as a u integral, this is du over root u. I can't write that u goes from 1 to 3. That was x going from 1 to 3. So let's transform the limits up here and say x equals 1 implies that u is equal to 2 times 1 minus 1. x equals 3 implies that u equals 2 times 3 minus 1. That's 5. And so this integral goes from 1 to 5. Now I can do the u integral. This is a u to the negative 1 half. I guess I'll write that. And then I use the power rule. I add 1 to the exponent and divide by the result. So I have 1 half, um, and I have a u to the 1 half divided by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. All right, these 2s cancel, and I get 5 to the 1 half, which is root 5, minus 1 to the 1 half, which is 1, and I get the same answer that way. Um, so I'm trying to encourage you as much as possible to stick with this informal approach. And you're looking for some kind of function of an interior sitting right next to the derivative of that interior, and then the chain rule backwards becomes guessable. This is really good for your efficiency.